Hey guys, this is Lockie, and this is the fifth part of my VR tutorial series. Here's what we're going to be making in this episode. So yeah, today we're going to be expanding upon the held object, uh, held object interaction system, I guess. Um, it's basically just adding limited fields of movements, like with this drawer. Uh, it has physics, so when you let go it keeps on sliding, but that's what we're going to be making. Okay, so first what we need to do is migrate the rigid body simulator from the hand script to the held object script. So I've got the hand script. And we're basically just going to copy it all in, um, start with the start script. Um, actually, I think we can just copy that whole thing except for the bottom part. So let's copy that, paste it in, close it off. Um, actually, we'll get rid of that as well now. Um, okay, now copy the simulator variable and paste it in as well. Now we're going to get every other insta instance of it and paste them in. Um, this will be in the update function. Um, what you need to do is if parent does not equal null, we're going to do that. Um, now go back into there, uh, delete that, and that's everything. Okay, so now what we're going to do is fix a few things. So um, we're going to do simulator dot get component. Actually, um, we don't need to get component because this is the rigid body. So simulator dot use gravity equals false. Um, then we're going to change this right here. So instead of just going parent dot get component hand dot simulator velocity, we're just going to make it so that we get simulated directly because it's actually part of this now. Um, and in the update function, um, we're going to do transform uh, parent dot transform dot position um, because that's where it was before. So now we have pretty much migrated it from the hand to the held object script. Now we actually need to put that into use. Okay, so next we're going to create a new script. Uh, do create uh, C sharp script, and we're going to call it sliding draw. So open that up, um, and we're going to do a require component thing at the top. So require component type of held object. So this is like it'll just automatically add held object when you add this to something. Uh, we're going to create a few variables. So we're going to do uh, transform parent public transform point a public transform point b vector 3 offset and a held object which is the held object component of this object. First we're going to uh, initialize this held object component And next we're going to create a bit of a long script. Um, this might make, not make a lot of sense. Um, I'd recommend if you don't already know what it is uh, to look up what a dot product is. You should already know it though. Um, so let's get started with it. Um, this is basically just going to get the closest point on the line from point A to point B um, based on the uh, controller parent. So this basically just gets inside of the field of movement that it should be in. So vector three, um, closest point on line, and then we're going to give it one uh, parameter, and that is a vector three called point, which is basically just the controller point. So um, we're going to create a few more variables: uh, vector three va, which is equal to point a dot position plus offset. We'll initialize this offset variable in a minute, but for now we'll just use it. Um, we're going to do create a uh, VB in a second. Uh, vector 3 VB equals point B dot position plus offset. Uh, now we're going to create a, a variable called V vector 1. Uh, vector 3 V vector 1 equals point 
minus VA. This is basically just the offset from the first point, uh, which is point A, to the uh, position of the controller. So yeah, um, vector 3, V vector 2 equals um, VB minus VA dot normalized. That basically just gives us the direction uh, of VB from VA. Um, now we're going to use the dot product, so float t equals vector3 dot dot. Uh, we're going to feed in uh, v vector1, actually no, v vector2 first, and then v vector1. That basically just gets the um, float of the distance uh, basically along the line. Again, if you don't know what a dot product is, I recommend you look it up. It's a useful formula. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to check if t is less than or equal to 0. We're just going to return point A. Um, and then we're going to do if t is greater than or equal to vector 3 dot distance va vb then we'll return vb that basically just means if uh, the point is further along the line than the last point then just return the last point next what we're going to do is do a vector 3 variable uh, call it v vector 3 and it's going to be uh, vector 2 uh, v vector 2 times t so that's basically just the exact point uh, but in local position. So then what we'll do is we'll get the word world position of that. So vector three, v closest point equals v a plus um, v vector three. So that actually gets the exact world position of the closest point on the line. So yeah, then what we're going to do is we're going to return that variable. Okay, so next what we're going to do is create a few more functions. So public void pick up. We don't need to give it any parameters. And then we're going to do public void drop. Um, now what we're going to use these for is in the held objects component of... Um, we don't have an object for it yet, so we we'll, won't use those yet, but we'll just write the code for it. So um, in the pickup, we're going to write parent equals uh, held object dot parent dot transform. So that just sets it so that you don't need to access that every time. You can just go straight from parent. And then offset equals parent dot position minus transform dot position. Uh, so yeah, we used that a minute ago, but yeah, that just uh, does everything for, by itself. So um, on drop, we're going to do held object dot rigid body simulator. Actually, no, just simulator um, dot transform dot position equals transform dot position plus offset. Uh, this basically just makes it so there's no big jump in velocity whenever you drop it, um, and in the parent part, uh, we're going to do parent equals held object dot simulator dot transform. So basically, whenever you drop it, instead of being the like the parent being the controller, uh, you're setting the parent to the rigid body simulator, so it basically just slides after you've let it go. Um, otherwise, it would just stop and it wouldn't be physically accurate. I'm just going to do this because I don't really like the commenting. But um, next in the update function, we're going to do if parent does not equal null transform dot position equals closest point online parent dot position minus offset okay so that basically just uh, feeds in the parent position on the closest point of the line so you're getting the closest point on the line from the controller and then you're subtracting the offsets so that uh, it doesn't jump around whenever you grab it and it just basically works off of where your hand was when you picked it up. 
Okay, so back to the editor, we're going to actually create the object, so uh, go to wherever you want to place it, make a cube, um, just center it real quick, uh, place it wherever you'd like, it doesn't really matter, um, I'm going to duplicate it, set it as the child of that, I'm going to give it a size of 0 0.9 in each direction, and I'm going to offset it slightly, um, just 0 0.2 probably, it seems pretty good. Um, and then what we'll do is um, we'll add the component to it. So um, we'll give it a rigid body component and we will give it a uh, sliding draw. And um, for some reason the variable's not showing up. Why is that? Um, oh, I haven't saved it yet. So save that. And then we're going to create a few more objects. Uh, we'll create a child, um, and this will be point A. So that's exactly where it starts off. Um, yep. And then we'll create point B. Uh, this will be maybe point eight or something like that. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you do it. It's just going to be the second point on the line. And then we're going to give it point A and point B as point A and point B, which makes sense. And I think that should be good to go. Actually, one more thing quickly. Um, it hasn't added that held object component, so we'll add that. And also in here, we've got to set the um, drop and pick up uh, to the relative thing. So we're going to do, um, this is cube two, isn't it? Yep, cube two. And um, then we're going to select the sliding draw, uh, pick up, and then we're going to do the exact same thing in drop, except with um, except with drop. So now that'll do the right thing instead of just doing the default uh, sort of physically unlimited thing. Um, we'll set it to drop on release because you don't want to have to press the button again to drop the draw. So I think that's everything. Quickly, one more thing before you press play, just open up the cube2 object, or whatever you've named at this point. I would suggest you do rename it, because that's not the most accurate name, and just set it to is kinematic, because otherwise it would float away. So, yeah, give that a play now. Okay, so at this point you should have this working. Um, there's a few ways you can improve it. For example, uh, when you move your hand away from it, it just keeps on sliding, um, or it stays attached. Uh, you could make it so that maybe when you move too far away from it, it breaks the connection and then automatically drops it, but uh, yeah, you can see me moving right there where my hand's nowhere near it and it continues to stay attached. But that's that's the one thing you could do, but there are a lot of things you could do as well. Uh, next episode, we're going to be creating a door, so something that like actually rotates instead of uh, repositioning itself. So yeah. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and check out some of my other videos. If you haven't already, subscribe and enable notifications so you can know whenever I upload. See you in the next video.